So today I'm going to discuss a common issue when putting cams in a 2JZ. Um, I've had several customers and seen a lot of people online um, post that they put cams in their car and then come to find out they end up in the exhaust valves. What a lot of people tend to do is they like to put the motor at TDC before they install the cams. The problem with this approach, while it can be done without damaging things, it's very easy to accidentally have the exhaust cam in the wrong position. As you tighten the cam caps down, it will press the exhaust valve into the top of the piston, therefore bending the exhaust valve. What I do, and I've been doing this for a long time because I've bent some myself, is we actually, before we put the cams in, we come down here and we turn the crankshaft. You have a VVTi gear. I turn it about five or six teeth forward. If you have a standard uh, 12 tooth non-VVTi gear, it's about three teeth. And what this does is it lowers the number six piston down in the bore just enough to where if the cam's not perfectly located, when you start to tighten it down, the valves won't actually contact the piston. So what we have here is a GSC R2M cam. We were uh, kind of part of the R&D project with these camshafts with the White Rice 240. And uh, it's kind of my go-to cam now for any of uh, the methanol powered 2JZ stuff that we do. So broke a lot of records with that, right? Yeah, we have broken a lot of records with this cam. Uh, Joel Granis runs this cam, White Rice runs this cam. Before too long, Jack Kuda will be running this cam. It's just a really good all around grind. And like I said, we went through five or six, maybe seven different revisions to come up with this, uh, working with Greg over at GSC, just really trying to get the most out of the platform on uh, methanol, um, you know, kind of higher 2000 plus horsepower type setups. First thing we're gonna do, make sure our cam seal is located in a, approximately where it needs to be. And we're gonna look at the gear, make sure to see where the TDC mark is on the gear. Cam gear side first so that you get the seal in place. Set it down. And what we're gonna do is make sure that the cam is turned slightly forward, just like the crankshaft. And you can see that it's clockwise this way. And it kind of it's kind of a natural position. If you feel it, it'll kind of drop into that spot and you can feel it's actually put the intake cam in. The same process. Gear side first. Get the seal in the slot, carefully make sure everything lines up, and then same thing. Now if you notice, like if you try to put them in at TDC, they kind of sit high in the journal. So when you turn it forward, it, they kind of rest in a good kind of a neutral spot. So that's where you want them to sit. Usually we'll save these as the last ones to tighten. And the reason why is I get all the other cam caps in there, move the cams around just a little bit so they kind of like settle themselves and then we'll go back and push the uh, cam seal all the way in and make sure it's proper before we tighten the fronts down. Put the cam caps on, we're going to put assembly lube on the actual journals. Each one of these gets a little bit of assembly lube. Don't need anything fancy, some people like to use the high quality, high dollar stuff, some people have their, everyone has their kind of like go-to lube. We just use this basic like AutoZone, you know, it's just a basic like Molly Graphite lube. Um, been doing it like this for seven years we've never had issues so why change when it's working a little bit of this on every journal so I like to get a little bit of oil this isn't actually a gear lube it's just some uh, 90 weight I just used the bottle because it has a good way to applicate it a little bit of oil in all the, uh, the holes where the bolts are gonna go in cam cap bolts just ensures that they don't bind up while you're torquing them and we'll use the same oil again once we start tightening the caps down to uh, lubricate the lobes a little bit so that they have some kind of additional lube on them whenever they spin for the first time. So you usually start from the number two caps. We usually save the number one cap for last just so once the cams are all the way in position and we've kind of centered and relaxed everything, uh, we can push the seals in and make sure they're lined up properly. People look down on uh, impact guns. Don't impact it, just use it to bring this screw in until it stops. From that point forward, you want to do the rest of it by hand. Just want to go a little bit at a time all the way across the camshaft. All of the uh, cam caps basically started, uh, and you can see none of them are actually completely flat. I did that on purpose because since I'm using an impact gun, I don't want to over torque it or break the bolt, so I just get them down to where they're close all the way across. And then I go back with a torque wrench. I usually start from the middle and kind of work my way out, but. After all tightened, I go back and just double check them all. 
sometimes what will happen is you'll tighten one and then when you tighten the one next to it it kind of loosens it up so you have to just go back and check them i'll usually do this at least twice just to make sure everything's good now all the cam caps are tight the next thing i do well other than the first ones obviously next thing i do is i put a wrench on a cam and i kind of move it back and forth just to make sure there's no binding make sure it moves okay and because the pistons are down there's a plenty of room between the uh, valves and the tops of the pistons where you can wiggle a little bit and not worry about bending or hurting it. Just give it a little wiggle, make sure it's good. Everything's tight, lubricated. We know the cams are loose, none of them are binded up. The next step is the most critical part of lining everything up to prevent bending anything. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is move the exhaust gear into its correct position, which would be the cam TDC mark to the top. So we're gonna grab the exhaust gear, rotate it, until it's TDC. Now both gears are relatively close to where they're gonna be. We've avoided any kind of valve to piston contact by having the pistons down the bore slightly. Now we're gonna rotate the crankshaft back to TDC. So, now everything is pretty much lined up and we haven't bent any valves. Put the belts on. Let's see here. This is Move the gear slightly forward, slip the belts on there. Uh, it looks like I'm taking these to go forward a little bit. Now everything's 100% lined up, and the last thing you do is tighten the tensioner on the bottom, and you're good to go. A step before you put the front cam cap on is you want to come in here with a punch or some sort of not sharp object and push the cam seal, make sure it's all the way in and flush with the cam journal. You can also look at it from the top here. You can kind of tell that it's straight because there's no gap on the uh, actual journal where the seal sits. So once you know it's all the way in there and everything's good, you can put the front cam caps on, tighten up your tensioner and you're basically good to go. to make note of just because somebody's probably going to point it out on the video if you look at the front here it looks like the exhaust gear is a little bit off it's actually not it's because the previous cams had some adjustment in them if you look at the actual tdc mark is this dot right here so it's actually pretty much straight up but we will be adjusting these cams on the dyno everything's tight i like to just spin the motor over one time by hand just make sure we don't hear any funny noises there's no tight spots nothing weird like that Make sure everything's actuating properly. Make sure the lobes aren't hitting anything. Shouldn't, this head was clearing just for a big camp, so it should be good. You also want to check the the actual uh, the uh, cam sensor pickup, make sure it's got a little bit of clearance, make sure it's not going to hit anything. If you guys are doing billet blocks for the first time, beware of the studs that are um, in line with the cam trigger pickups because a couple of the companies were selling studs that had extended tips on them and when this little trigger piece comes around it would hit the tip and it would break the trigger off so just make sure you check that before you spend the motor over with the starter and make sure it clears see here these are actually a little bit lower profile so not a problem Start it off. yeah go ahead. Ah! just keep going i'll make sure you get all to the top Good. Any remarks? Oh, it's ready. It's ready to make 2200.